say salt is a vital nutrient for the body. In fact, your tongue has a specific sensor to detect it and can make most meals taste yummy. But how much is too much and what kind of problems can a salt overload cause? Dr. Ian Smith is back with us to explain more. Okay, so we do need salt, right? Or we sodium. absolutely need salt. Sodium is very important for us. It's important for our cells. So we do need salt. Let's talk about what salt is, first of all. Salt is the combination of two ions, sodium and chloride, NaCl. And that's what we typically eat. So sodium chloride, or we just say salt. Uh, and salt's important for us. It's, it's, it, we've eaten it for a long time. We need it. We're, we're over-consuming it. Yeah, look, this is about, when we talk about over-consuming, about what the average American yeah. does. So, so let's talk about, so a teaspoon of salt is about 2,300 milligrams. Okay, the recommendation from the American Heart Association and others is that most people consume 1,500 milligrams or less a day. Wow. Some can consume 2,300, but most people probably need just about 1,500, uh, particularly the high-risk groups. Yeah. So there are about 2,300 uh, milligrams of uh, salt in a teaspoon. Wow. Over the course of a year, we consume over 11 cups of salt, oh, wow. okay, yeah. which is probably about eight seven to eight times more than we're supposed to be consuming, the okay. average American. So when we say, okay, so um, we got that there, but we can move on to things that, that we have seen on the grocery store shelves, things like um, the Himalayan salt, because yeah. it's from Himalayas. Yeah, so. So, so can I have more yeah, of this? Yeah, well, my caveat to everybody is this. You know, manufacturers need to sell product. Mm -hmm. And the way they sell product is through marketing. Himalayan sea salt is from the Himalayan mountain range, mm -hmm. down by India and Pakistan well, and, and, and Asia. Um, um, and so it's mined from that particular region, that region. Now it does have some other minerals in it, but from a nutritional standpoint, it is no more nutritional or beneficial than regular table salt. Mm -hmm. Okay, in fact, regular table salt actually has iodine in it, right. which is added to it, and iodine's important for your thyroid or to prevent goiter. So table salt has iodine, and it also has an agent in it that prevents it from clumping. Okay, so that's in your table salt, um, which and is here. Have, yeah, table salt right here, right? Here. Regular. But Himalayan salt comes from the Himalayas. That's what all it is. It has a different color. Everyone thinks, oh, my, it must be healthy. healthy. Sea salt, for example, comes from bodies of water. They take the water, they evaporate it, and what's left is sea salt. But typically, nutritionally, it's the same as table salt. Uh -huh. It's not any much better. All right, what about kosher salt? The kosher salt, <laughs> the kosher salt, sorry to bust your bubble. <laughs> I think the, I have more of that, right? It's, it's and no more nutritional, uh, uh, nutritionally valuable, but the thing is the kosher salt, they're bigger crystals. So you tend to use less, less yeah. because you get more of the flavor with a smaller amount. Okay, so if you just do a pinch of salt, a pinch just goes a, pinch a long way. Yeah. Okay, this is where a lot of us get into troubles with processed foods, things like, uh, you know, the, the noodle packs and stuff like that, the uh, the meat. Now, they say sodium nitrate. What's the word nitrate, you just said in there? The, you said I, processed. Processed, yes. That's it. There you go. Processed. The idea is that manufacturers are taking foods. This is foods. Oven, oven roasted, though. Right? <laughs> turkey breast. Manufacturers love people like you. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing, like, when we say turkey, like, you right. know, turkey automatically is healthier, right? Well, is that the turkey you have on Thanksgiving? Does your turkey on Thanksgiving look like that? Oh, jeez. Probably not, right? <laughs> so here's the idea. These things have something called sodium nitrite. And sodium, the nitrites are great for curing meats, mm -hmm. like deli sandwiches. Preserving, right? They preserve, and that's why they use them. But they also increase your risk for cancer. So instead of having prepared deli meats, spend a little more money and get it fresh. Have them give you fresh. People should not even feed their kids this ever. Now, look at this ramen noodle stuff that I never had in college, but it was very popular. If you never had this in college. I didn't. And you were in medical school. <laughs> I didn't. I just didn't know. I didn't know what it was until I got older. But look at this. 1,190 yeah. milligrams in of salt. In that one salt. serving. One serving. Now, I said to you earlier, 1,500 for the day and there's 1,100 and just one serving. So now you see why we are over-consuming salt. Yeah. If you're gonna have something like pretzels, I love those pretzels, by the way, my favorite yeah. is kids. They go, but you know what? You just knock the salt just off. Just knock of some of the salt <laughs> off. That's all. Yeah, okay, but, 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 you can knock the salt, but we can't forget that what we also are eating is bread, right? It is and some bread. of this but, is processed but and listen, some of this is not But the... listen, listen, you, once again, you're not gonna be perfect, right? You're gonna have your places where you're gonna have things that aren't that, <laughs> that are not the healthiest. But, but everything in moderation, everything in moderation, it's good, right? Okay. What if I in used instead the artificial salt stuff, like Mrs. Dash, right? Which Mrs. is a Dash. salt yes. substitute? So Mrs. it's a salt substitute. Mm -hmm. It has good spices to mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Completely fine. If you want to, you know, some people are so addicted to salt mm -hmm. that when they don't taste it, you know, right away, mm -hmm. they go crazy. 
over the course of a week or two weeks, you get adjusted to it. Yeah, and you this got is to my, taste the food. This yeah, is my popcorn. This is good. Well, we can have popcorn. Yeah, this is my, this is my popcorn. Yeah. I love this popcorn. It's called Shred Pop. Uh, there's white cheddar. There's honey barbecue, sea salt, and kettle. <laughs> This is good. It's good, right? It's very good. We sell it online. Um, this is really good. Uh, and here's the difference. It's air popped. So a lot of popcorns are oil popped. So this is air popped, but it also has the seasoning because who wants that popcorn without flavor? So my favorite actually is the honey barbecue. Oh, the honey that. barbecue is the great. Okay? Um, but you want to try to find the air popped popcorn. It's light. But it still has flavor. It's good, right? It's really good. And it's, and it's healthy for you, so. Let's have white cheese honey barbecue. <laughs> no, this, okay, I'll joke you aside. This is really it's good, good, right? It's yes, good. So our, our website is shredlife.com. You can order it. We'll, we'll ship it to you. We're not in Houston yet. Mm. Get us in the head, H E B. I'll call Scott. You call All Scott. Right. <laughs> when we come back, there's a whole world that lies between sugar and salt. We'll take a trip to the grocery store to check out other seasonings that don't only add taste, but also nutrition. And I did get you into HEB. That's where it is right there now. There you are. <laughs>